Welcome back to Getting Started with Figma. In the last video, we invited our team to collaboratively design a shopping and checkout user flow for our new clothing brand, Fitma. Because we used components and styles from our team library, we were able to design confidently without the concern of deviating too far from our brand. Components also sped up the design process because we didn't need to create each element from scratch. This allowed us to shift our focus to other aspects of the user flow instead. In this video, we're going to use our design to build a prototype that we can test in our browser. If you want to follow along, we've added a link in the video description to get your own copy of the design file. Let's start prototyping. We can click on the presentation icon in the toolbar to open presentation view in a new tab. This is where we'll view our prototype. I'm going to set up my window so that I have presentation view in another browser window next to my design file. This way, I can see both at once. Without doing anything else, we can click on the navigation arrows on the bottom of the screen to progress through our frames in the order they appear on the canvas. This is a great option when using Figma to walk through a presentation or a linear user flow. But when we want to make our designs feel more like an actual application, connecting specific elements in the design is the next step. Before we start making connections, let's talk about device frames and scrolling. Right now, our design looks kind of strange because it's a long mobile website being displayed on a computer screen. We can make our prototype more realistic by selecting a device frame from the prototype tab. If the device frame you choose is dark, you might want to adjust the background color to lighten things up. Since our design was taller than the height of our device frame, we can now scroll through our designs in presentation view. But this design would look better if we fix the header and promotional banner to the top of the screen while the rest of the page scrolls behind them. To do this, we need to select those layers and click Fix Position When Scrolling in the Properties panel. Now, when we scroll our prototype in presentation view, those layers will be fixed to the top. We can do this for the remaining frames as well. This looks great. Now let's start making our prototype connections. We want users to be directed to the product details page after clicking or tapping on the product card on the home page. To do this, we'll ensure we're in the prototyping tab by selecting it above the right side panel. Then we'll double click above the card until we select the product card instance. With the card selected, we can see a blue circular node on its right side. We'll click on that and drag it to the product details frame to make a connection. We'll also select the word mark in the product details page and make a connection back to the home page so that users can click on the word mark to return to the home page. In presentation view, we can click on the card to navigate to the product details page. Then click on the word mark to go back. Back in the editor, we can see that we have some new properties available in the right side panel to customize our interaction. By default, the trigger is set to on tap. So when we tap on the card, the action is triggered. The action defaults to navigate, so we are instantly sent to a new frame. There are two more options, including swap and overlay. We'll use the overlay action to prototype a confirmation message soon. But for now, we'll look at the transition properties. Rather than have the prototype instantly switch to the product details page, let's make it move in from right to left. Click the left arrow in the direction property. Figma will then fill in the remaining properties with some default values. We can also hover our mouse over the preview to see what the animation will look like. Feel free to customize these details and experiment with different configurations. For now, we'll leave the default values. Let's also add a transition to the connection back to the home page. We want this transition to move out instead of move in. We used move in for the first transition. Using move out here and changing the direction to the right will emulate a reverse transition. This will feel more natural to our users, like they're undoing the previous action and navigating backwards. In presentation view, we can see how our new animated transitions work. First, the product details screen transitions in from the right above the home page. Then it moves back out of the frame to the right, revealing our home page underneath. 
When a user adds an item to their cart by clicking the Add to Cart button, we want to display a confirmation message that the item was successfully added. We'll click the Add to Cart button and then drag a connection to the confirmation modal frame. Because we want the confirmation to be an overlay above the frame, we'll change the action from Navigate to Overlay. Overlays have a position property to determine where within your prototype they'll appear. We'll leave this in the center position. To more strongly separate the modal from the background frame, we'll increase the overlay background opacity to 50%. We also want to make sure the close when clicking outside checkbox is checked, so we can dismiss the overlay by clicking outside of it. Let's also connect the go to cart button in the confirmation overlay to the cart summary frame. In presentation view, we can click add to cart to open the overlay. The overlay appears directly in the center of the screen above the original frame with a 50% opaque background between them. Clicking outside of the overlay will close the overlay and return to the original frame. We're just going to make a few additional connections to wrap up this prototype. Select the buttons at the bottom of the next few frames and check the Fix Position checkbox. We'll also make connections from these buttons so we can use them to navigate through the rest of the checkout flow. These frames use a back arrow icon in the header, which we want to navigate back to the previous frame. To do this, we can select the arrow icon, then choose Back from the Action menu. We can also connect the menu icon to a menu overlay, which we can manually position within our frame below the icon. And that's it. We've quickly turned our designs into a functioning prototype of a shopping and checkout user flow. Prototyping allows you to bring your static designs to life. It's an important part of the design process and is a great way to validate your designs and ideas through testing. The ability to use a single tool to design and prototype all in one place is invaluable when working collaboratively within your project team. When you're ready to share your prototype with your project team, testers, or your development team, you can click the share button in presentation view and just send them a link. Handing off your designs and prototypes to your developers is a critical part of the design and development process to bring your products to market. In the next video, we'll show you Figma's many developer handoff features. Thanks for watching.